All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Afterlife Collective. I'm Leah. I have Ulysses and uh, Josh here. And today we're talking about proper procedures on EVPs. And I'm going to let Ulysses <laughs> take over from here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Um, well, I've been doing uh, EV, uh, ghost hunting for a couple of years, you know, on and off for the last 10 plus years now. And uh, the main thing that I, I like and I like to use is the tape recorder, digital tape recorder. And the main thing that I usually try to un understand first is get to know your tape recorder. Because a lot of the yeah. times, you know, uh, most of the inves investigations that I've seen, it, it's that I've been on, they've happened at night. So you got to figure out, you know, go <laughs> by feel button? of it. Yeah, where's yeah. the button? Where's the battery compartment? No. Um, where's the rec uh, record button and all that uh, and all that stuff? So that usually There's, yeah, that's that, that's a good point because uh, I have mm -hmm. one that's backlit and then I have one that's not. So you know, usually the backlit ones is what I like, but mm -hmm. you're still gonna have to figure out where the buttons are and everything. So yeah, especially if you, uh, without any kind of light source. Yeah, even if you have a phone or a flashlight, you want to make sure you. You, you get to still, know it yeah. and be able to operate it in the dark. Yeah, unless it's like, you know, my test cam that, you know, has 480 million different functions <laughs> on it. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to use these two. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like I'm going to have to change my recording device because it's not as fancy as you guys. <laughs> oh, this is not fancy, by the way. This is these are like the basic ones, basically. Actually, yours, yeah. is, yours is a little more fancier than ours, but... Because it probably has a little few more other functions to it, so. And you really don't need a very expensive uh, tape recorder. No, not no, I, I don't think all. so. No. And um, I've never tried using my phone as a tape recorder, but I think I will try it out. Uh, just, just because. Just, because, <laughs> just, be, just because you know you got the you gotta have the right tool for the right job. No, that's true. I mean, so, I would say it comes in hand. You know, if you're carrying your phone, you ain't got anything else that comes in handy. But I'm one of those, you know, I, I hate seeing, you know, everybody relies on the phone for mm -hmm. everything. Let's not take your phone, put it in a little cartridge and have all the stuff hanging off the right. side of it to do a podcast or, or you know, a video. I, I, just, I just, I can't do that. But mm -hmm. if, you know, if that's all you got, yeah. Use it. You got to start it. somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the things uh, when we start recording is uh, you got to make sure you understand where the location is. Uh, in some places, you know, there's going to be heavy traffic or maybe no traffic. That's a good example. I mean, a good yeah. example was Pioneer Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It's right next to a freeway. It is never quiet there. <laughs> so, you know, but we, we worked around it, you know, and you do have to learn to work around that kind of stuff. But, yes, know your environment so you know what to question what not to question mm -hmm. and when to point something out oh yeah by the way somebody you know an ambulance just drove by a helicopter flew over uh you know just loud noises in general yeah. just make sure you point it out when you're recording oh that was a car oh yeah that was an 18 we want to drive that's a dog barking you that's know, a dog barking. that kind of thing that's a good idea and it's very important just so you can make sure that everyone's on the same page and not saying oh did you hear that Later on when you're yeah. reviewing the, the recording. What was that noise? Um, it's a ghost dog. <laughs> we'll just play it off that. You want to eliminate everything as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. No contamination okay. if possible. The next thing is know what you're wearing. For yes. example, you don't want to <laughs> wear too much jewelry or anything that clinks because as you're moving around. It's going to make noise. It's going to exactly. make noise. I mean. Bushes and mm -hmm. chains now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Today, mine is not making very much noise because I. I usually, if I'm doing an investigation, I usually try to go with like the cords, like uh, suede cord or something like that. Okay, leather yeah. suede cord. If if you wear metal medallions, especially like you know, you, you, like uh, Saint Benedict, that kind of thing, people wear those usually when they're doing this kind of stuff. Um, do that or tuck it someplace where it's not going to make a lot of noise. You know, and, and keys mm -hmm. are a bad one like that, and um, some people. Uh, they're always playing with their change or something in their pockets. So you're saying I can't eat a bag of chips doing that? <laughs> oh. I would not recommend it. Pringles. Okay. Pringle, really Pringles. loud Pringles. <laughs> I would not recommend sitting mm -hmm. there going, 
Is there anyone here in the house that can help me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that probably wouldn't work. Delicious? No. A malicious you know, <laughs> pop every oh. once in a while. All right. Maybe. All right. Well, as long as you identify, oh, that was a pop. That was me. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. I'm chewing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing that I didn't notice when using any kind of like recording is that you got to start it and then just put it somewhere else so you're not going to be uh, handling it. Because I did notice that it's like you'll hear it in in the recording, just yeah. like muffled sounds that yeah, I've sound s- like footsteps. Yeah, and or doing people it, or like to do it properly. this. They're covering the speaker, and it's making a, you know, is they're moving mm. it, you know. Oh, yeah. So you got to kind of, if you are holding it, you know, kind of two-finger it maybe, you know, and hold it like this. But 99% of the time, lay it down. It, just yeah, leave, just yeah. leave it on the ground or leave it somewhere. Yeah, set just it down set in front it down of you. And just not touch it and... Try to uh, try to maintain as still as possible. I know it's very hard for some some people to do. Just yeah, just stand still. <laughs> stand and still, you know. Make and as m- minimal movement as possible, just so you can uh, eliminate that uh, contamination of movement of sound. Yeah, and like you said, what you're wearing, what mm-hmm. you know, not only your jewelry, clothing. Sometimes, mm-hmm. have you ever seen those? I call them pimp pants. Those really sh- kind of sparkly, mm-hmm. uh, soft kind of, get especially they make them like for, you know, like sports shorts and stuff like that. And you, when you're walking, sh- 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 that kind of noise, you know, so you kind of have to watch that. Women are the worst though. Corduroy. <laughs> corduroy. <laughs> yes, corduroy. <laughs> but women are usually the worst because we're, for some reason, you know, we're attracted to those weird fabrics and everything and you know it's usually nine times out of ten when it comes to clothing it'll be women that are making the noise or see through those fabrics <laughs> yeah because they make us look all so good huh no complaints no complaints <laughs> <laughs> especially when it comes to blue right yeah okay are and we of back course, to the tutu conversation again yes we are okay. <laughs> the blue will be updated We'll let you guys know about the whole blue color in yes. uh, future <laughs> in future reference. Yes, future reference. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> okay, another okay. thing I think we should kind of point out too is um, when you are doing this kind of stuff, let's slow down people and try. You got to give them a chance to answer because I've seen that is one of my pet peeves is people are like, "How many children are in here? How many ghosts are in here? Um, 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 let's see. Um, how many of this? How many of that? Um, um, are you dead? Do you know you're dead? Is this your house? Is this not your house? You know, and you're like, calm down. Slow down. Yeah, slow down. They got to have a chance to answer. Otherwise, they're just gonna go. It's a prank. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, yeah, no kidding. I yeah. can't count how many shows I've watched, and and that's it's just the rapid questions. It it really. It really doesn't make sense, and, and and I'm not sure. I'm not really sure if it's just the editing that makes it that way, but I'm. But I've also seen shows where it's just it's natural. You know, you know that it was just one after another, and it's just yeah. Uh, how do yeah, you, you know do what have, they said? You were exactly. probably talking over them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or if I was a ghost, you know, and somebody was rapidly doing that, I'd be like, you know, and just give Can up. I talk? <laughs> Can I talk? Give me a right, minute, and I'll exactly. answer you. You know, but um, I think you got a point. Is it edited that way? And I know a lot of shows do edit it that way because, you know, it's basically... you got the, 30 minutes for a whole Well, next I think, what is it? The, fu- the, the TV show thing is 42 minutes. Mm-hmm. Everything else is commercialized and all that stuff. So in 42 minutes, you know, I, I can understand them editing some of that down. But sometimes it is. It's like, seriously? And then I've seen YouTube videos where, like, the live ones that they do. And they're just rapidly. And you're like, just, just stop. Slow down. You're, All right. This is insane, you know. Take a breath. Exactly. <laughs> that that kind of actually brings something up in my mind. Is it important to um, timestamp it, like as you're? Uh, would you audio uh, audibly uh, timestamp it, or would you just leave it as the recording started? I mean, does your recorder uh, uh, cover the timestamp on its own, or do you have to state it? No, the uh, this recorder actually just starts recording time. When you press the button, so it'll be zero, 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 one second, two seconds. Yeah. So and you, funny that you should mention that because when we were doing an investigation and here, uh, we had two tape recorders, but we didn't have we didn't have the idea to actually uh, verbally timestamp it. For example, just saying 
it's 9.01 p.m., you know, yeah. on both out loud. So that the to- both tape recorders should be uh, synchronized. Okay. So yeah. in case something pops up, um, for example, there's a, a vo- EVP, we can figure out, hey, check the times. Yes. Because the, it, there's a possible high possibility that it doesn't show up but it, it, on either one. But if it does, then I would probably say that's a strong strong evidence for something paranormal. Something paranormal. Yeah. Well, I will say some of them, they do, like okay. Vince has one. It will timestamp it for you. Okay. But those are the bigger machines and stuff like that. So nine, nine times out of ten, like you said, it just, you know, it starts the recording, ends the recording. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you have two different kinds of machines and stuff like that, too, another reason probably for um, audio, you know, setting the time and all that stuff and, and giving a timestamp to it is you can compare it to somebody else's. Because yeah. yep. nine times out of ten, there's going to be at least two of you with a recorder. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that I mean a lot of people just go with one recorder, but it is good to have at least two just, you know, in case one picks something up and one doesn't or or uh like I said, I've always wanted to do the the experiment you get the same like, you know, three of the Sony's, put them together on different speeds, you mm-hmm. know, and see which one picks it cuz sometimes all three will pick it up on different speeds sometimes. Only one of them will pick something up. I'd love to do that experiment. I really would. Well, we got three of them here. And well, we got yeah, we could always try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have an investigation coming up, so we might try that with that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's another important reason. That way, you know, everybody, we can kind of sync up a little better as long as you're you're voicing what time it is, what where you're at. Yeah, that's another good thing, where yeah. you're at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that would probably be really good for the review part process too. Is uh, stating what time it was and who you're with, and so you'd be able to match it up a lot faster. Yeah, you know I mean? mm-hmm. that's True. the thing so because when we're doing the review, of the yeah, we, process when we're doing the investigation, I I wrote down the time that was on the t- recorder. Yeah, and then you start the oh, and right. then yes, and then I told you about it, and and then we had you know, to go over our our stuff, but. Luckily, ours wasn't too far off mm-hmm. from yours, but you know there might be a time. You know his did start, I think quick. I don't know if his was before yours started or vice versa. I think mine was started first. Yours was because started because they were there was like you know about two minutes in there that mm-hmm. was kind of off, but it was close enough at least that we could, you know, pick it down. Mm-hmm. So, I think that is a good important thing to make sure everybody knows what where you're at. What time it is, what you're doing, and who's with you, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yep. And location. And location, yes, because some people, you know, bathroom, bedroom, upstairs, you know, staircase. That's a good thing too, because somebody might be going over the footage, listening to something, and go, "Wait a minute, they're not even in the right room. Where, you know, what am I looking for?" You know. So yeah. that is a good point too. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So, what kind of questions would we actually ask on this one? I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> I'll bring out the cards. Pull so, out the cue cards. <laughs> so, Leah was nice enough to print these out, print these out, and some of the questions. You know, it's it's something basic. Yeah, basic so, questions. Basic questions. Well, one good point with these kind of things, I do these normally, like for people like you, or for even myself sometimes, because you, you get into a situation, you're excited. This is this is a cool hunt. Everybody's having fun and everything. And you get into a point where, you know, sometimes your brain will just, will stop. And I printed these up so sometimes it helps to get, because I've noticed that some people, once you get them started, then it flows out great. But sometimes they just need that little bit of help to get their brain in gear. And even I'm guilty of that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all are. Guilty yeah, of exactly. That. So these kind of, they, they kind of go with kind of the, you know, like you said, their mm-hmm. basic question. And once people start, you know, getting, okay, that worked out well, you know, and, and then a pause and, oh, that worked out well. Then they start forming, once their brain gets into gear, then they start forming other questions like, you know, the environment they're in or, right. or um, is this somebody who lived here before? And, you know, and then they continue on other than just the, you know, like 10 questions that I have. Kind just of generic Generic questions. questions once yeah. you start now asking questions, then you can you start uh Concentrating a little bit more on, you know, maybe something happened there. Maybe there was a, a small 
church nearby. Yeah. And, you know, you, you want to make little sh- bits and pieces of history and stuff mm-hmm. that might, that also might also trigger something else. Something more meaningful. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Sometimes they'll be like, you know, you kind of introduce yourself and, you know, tell them, okay, you know, we're just here to communicate and that kind of thing. And then start talking about little bits of history or, you know, things that have happened on the property. And that sometimes that pulls them out. You know, sometimes you get some really good responses once you get the flow going. And not just the uh, questions, but, I mean, you could bring in a toy or something yes. that was from that era or that would be significant to maybe perhaps someone in, from that er, uh, that that time period. Yeah. For example, uh, Jack in the Box. Uh, what were we talking about earlier? Marbles. Marbles are a good one because mm-hmm. kids like the, the marbles, the little army men, you know, wooden toys, especially like mm-hmm. when you're doing like, you know, early 1700s stuff, wooden toys, that was a big thing, you know, or mm-hmm. dolls or things like, you know, of mm-hmm. that nature that will bring the children, you know, something they remember or candy. Candy's a good one. Oh, lead chips. <laughs> See, there you go. You can save your Wait. chips to give to the kids. How about that? <laughs> But yeah, that kidding. kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, kidding, because he wants to know himself. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll I'll I'll, I'll bring the peppermint and whorehound candies. <laughs> so you know, then you yeah. can keep your chips. <laughs> but yeah, but like a, uh, like we uh, to emphasize, you know, just ask a question, take a couple of seconds, and then ask another a different question, and and the more you do it, the more you practice it. The, the easier it gets, yeah. The easier it gets, and I, and I think we we should really kind of keep the keep the questions respectful and uh, you know to the point instead of you know I would I'd be afraid to uh, to offend anybody you know I don't want it's not my purpose to mm-hmm. offend anybody especially someone I can't see yeah so, I mean <laughs> I think I think that's a good point too. yeah I think that you know a lot of these, a lot of these especially the young kids nowadays you know oh. Let's provoke them to get a response. Yeah. Provoking doesn't always get you a response, and, and then sometimes you get a response you do not want. Yeah, so, you know, to me, oh. it's more of, it would be better to be respectful and, you know, and not have that demon follow you <laughs> home because <laughs> he's pissed off at you. But, I, you yeah. know, I, I, I try and do that in every situation that we go into. Mm-hmm. Start out with the, you know, politeness. Start out with it, you know, there is a pl- there is a time and place that provoking will work and that it is necessary sometimes. But I would say nine times out of ten, you know, you you put you you take what you put into it. So if you go right. in nice, you're generally you're going to have better luck than just coming off and screaming and hollering. You know, mm-hmm. like because <laughs> we always tease. You know, the the Japanese have a thing. The way to get rid of ghosts is you cuss at them. That is, that's how they believe. You know, the ghosts are bad. And, you know, the only, you know, the, the, even if it's a ghost of your, your parents or whatever, they're supposed to be on the other side. So you yell and scream and cuss at them. And there, there's one show we like to watch. I can't remember the name of it. The guy literally cusses at the ghost. And it's hilarious just watching it. But, you know, <laughs> you know to me, it'd be like, why don't you try talking to him first? You know? <laughs> I, I personally wouldn't want to cuss at my mom if she was dead yeah. because then my mouth would taste like ivory soap. <laughs> you know? She'd come back and haunt you just to wipe your mouth with ivory soap. Well, the other thing is, you know, just be polite, be professional. And yeah. because most, well, we are, this is the age of the internet, so it's probably going to be online. Yeah. And, you, know, and oh. you don't want it to bite you in the butt later on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we do. Yeah, you, I could just see the reviews. Yeah. How terrible! You were yelling at a little old lady ghost. Shame on you. You know. So yeah, yeah. I think politeness gets you further. Yes. But I will say that provoking sometimes it it, it, it does work. It so, has its time and place. Yes, time and place exactly. Mm-hmm. So Josh, how you, are you? Are you getting your questions answered? Yeah, actually, yeah. I mean, it's it's been a I'm I'm enjoying the the learning process of being a greenhorn here, so <laughs> it's been it's been fun. I've been learning tons, tons so and tons. I'm really I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm anxious for it to be nice and warm, so we can go out there and start actually doing some good investigations and and getting mm. some real experience. And well, as soon as the snow melts off, I want to go to Roslyn because we have a story there. 
It's just we're waiting for the the snow to melt because I've heard that it's it's quite heavy right there. It, but it's getting warmer. And I can't I'm, wait I'm, till I'm, it's I'm warmer. I, I I'm sick of winter. I mean, we didn't have much mm-hmm. of a winter, but I'm sick of it already. You know. So okay. the last the last thing I have from is that this takes what, two AAA batteries. Um, whenever you're doing any kind of investigation, yeah, always bring spares. Yes, always bring <laughs> spares. Always bring spares, and um, well, I think this one only takes one, but the other one I got does take two. I I recommend the rechargeables, mm-hmm. um, just because it's cheaper in the long run. But it, rechargeables, I will say, also seem to be it, it's like they know. They, dr- they like those rechargeables. It's like feeding them Skittles. <laughs> you know, they will drain those quicker than they do the other batteries, but oh. they'll drain all the batteries. Right. Yes, only, I ran into that. Yeah. And then the ones that, like I said, I've never ran in. I always have those ones, you know, if you do have the ones that are USB charged, mm-hmm. they will say they're dr- dead until you walk out the room. Then they're full again. And I, <laughs> I've had that happen, but I've never had them completely drain one of those. It just says it's drained. Till you walk out of that area. It's, it's weird. It is the weirdest thing that has always happened to me. And I've never figured out what it is about that. That, you know, and then, well, if you notice, too, sometimes the rechargeables, because some of them that I got, you can fully charge them, turn them on, and they say they're down a little bit. I'm not sure if that, you know, I get that a lot, too, mm-hmm. is like, you know, they're down a little bit when you put them in. You know, what that makes me think of, okay, so, so. Ghost spirits can affect the magnetic field. So what if yeah. they are creating such a magnetic field that it's actually ma- making your machine malfunction, and that's why it gives it like a, a dead... But it's a, not. But it's yeah. not, yeah. I, I've often wondered that, too, if it has something to do with the EMF that they're creating, that it isn't just them draining something, because it's obviously because you walk out there, boom, it's back on, it's functioning fine, and then you're like, well came to charge it but it's not charging you know right. what's up with this so yeah I've, I've seen some vi- even on video i've seen uh videos where a person was going into an area and all of a sudden the the whole the whole camera just malfunctions like it it'll had a shut magnet itself yeah ran across it or something yeah you know? so i mean that's that's what it makes me think of yeah if, that if it might be that it might that just be field. that i didn't really think of that but that might be a good one some do, that's another thing to investigate. Yep. See, there you go. Mm-hmm. He's coming. He's coming up with some great ideas yep. here, Ulysses. <laughs> it's watching all those shows, man. You know, you <laughs> sit there and you, you know, you get that that critique going on. Like, why didn't they do this? And yeah, so. I, I, I'm bad at that. I'll be watching them going, <laughs> really, <sighs> really, right? Pet peeve, right there. What are you doing? You know, you Spe- should have known. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which. <laughs> Let's talk about our pet peeves, shall we? On oh. EVPs. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I think my biggest one, honestly, my my personal biggest one was is uh, the spacing of the the questions. You know, definitely give them time to, to talk. And I think our our common one that we that we have. Oh yes, is, <laughs> is the big one is uh, being quiet. You know, <laughs> yes. Stop talking. You know, <laughs> Answer your question and stop talking, or or the over exaggerated uh, um, emotions. Yeah. You know? Oh my God! Did you hear that? Oh my God! Oh my God! Well, yeah, that's what you were there for. Yeah. You no, know, why are you? <laughs> or no, out? I can't. Sit down. Shut up. I can't understand a damn thing that's going on because you keep saying, <gasps> "Did you hear that?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and immediately too. You know, not even giving them a chance to like the 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 noise to finish. Yeah. Yeah. I For would sure. just say wait until afterwards, you know, just double check your equipment and see if you actually caught it, anything within maybe the first five minutes of the recording. Yeah. You know, just for <laughs> just to check it out. But I mean, for the whole thing, you know, when you're doing the investigation and just going over the data or reviewing the data and then just that seems counterproductive in my opinion. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Another thing that bugs me. Oh, Lord. I have no problem with the word dudes in bro. Okay. okay. I have no problem with that, you know. But when you see a video, and I'm probably going to get shit for this. When you see a video where two guys are in a room, did you hear that dude, bro, dude, bro? Dude. 
for like 10 minutes straight, they said just those two words. I was like, did you lose function of your brain? I mean, dude, bro, dude, 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 bro. bro. Like, oh my God, seriously. My theory with that is that they were trying to, uh, they, were, they were trying not to use the word fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, fuck, fuck. Yeah, exactly. Man, please edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Now, now, we're not monetized. We can say it once in a while, so. Okay. But <laughs> for an exa- for example. Yeah, there we go. But no, point. that's that's like, it, it drives me nuts. I mean, every, you know, it, the dude bro thing doesn't bother me. I lived in California long enough that that doesn't bother me. <laughs> but when you say it 37 times in a row in, in less than 10 minutes, something's wrong with you. Your brain just completely shut down at that point. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah. Any others? <laughs> no, that's, those are my two biggest ones, man. It's just, it's like. You just you want to hear what is being said. You and want you to can't. catch that evidence, yeah. and then you can't if you are babbling on, and if you're being too emotional. You know what I mean? You're yeah, like, a high. That's another thing. You know, excitement is one thing. You know, this is why I have a hard time with some psychic mediums. Now, people like like say Chris Fleming. It's very rare to see him get completely utterly emotional i mean he will you know it's like yeah is there something in the room yeah i can feel something you know he's pretty calm about it because he you know he's had this he's done this for years and he's pretty calm about it i believe in a psychic more that way than the people that walk into a room start oh my god i can feel the spirit (laughs) you know (laughs) i can't i can't you know so when other people walk into a room and they're like did you hear that did you hear that did you hear that you know it's like Come on, you know, don't get so, don't get so drama into it. You know, it, it, yeah, we all get excitable once in a while. We all run from things once in a while. But it does not have to be a slapstick Three Stooges moment. Sure, sure. <laughs> control your emotions. Yes, try and keep them under you control. Know, you know, I'm sitting here saying this, and I'm thinking, you know, Josh, if you haven't been out there, <laughs> uh, you don't know how you're going to be, and I'm going to probably make – make myself a complete hypocrite on my first one <laughs> because something's going to happen and I'm going to be like, oh my God. <laughs> and yeah, I, I'm, I'm already seeing it. So look, you know, uh, maybe it's okay <laughs> for the first few times, but after you you've been think- doing it for like 20, 30 years, you would think that uh, this is pretty, you know, I've, yeah. I've been here. You know, so. Well, I, I looked at, you know, you like you said, you never know how you're going to react until the moment comes. And, you know, I've always figured, you know, I've watched other people. I, I'm one of those kind of people, though, usually when something happens, I handle it. Like, if they're like there's a big emergency or something, I will handle things. And then that's when I lose it. You know, and when everything's okay, ambulance is gone. This is, you know, everything. And then it's like, once you, and then you're emotional. Yeah. And I've always kind of been like that. So I'm always hoping you know, if a, you know, shadow person stands up in front of me, that I will be like, okay. And then when the camera stops moving, they'll be like, oh my fucking God, there was a guy in front of me. You know, <laughs> I'm hoping that's the way I'll act. We all hope for that way, but you never know until right. the moment happens. So, you know. I, I hope that I don't experience any like, major in your face you know i can handle something <laughs> down the hall but i'm hoping that it's not going to be just to jump right out yeah, at you but that's probably what's going to happen just because i don't want it to so you're probably listening you're planning things right <laughs> like hmm, what plotting, do we do to plotting, get this plotting. guy going <laughs> that's one of the you know that's one of the things that i really loved about uh i love about uh dave schrader is he is he's pretty stoic for the most part yeah and and he handles his reactions and that, that's why i believe in so much because is that's exactly as you're saying it's, yeah. it's more believable and to know that this person yeah because it doesn't look like they're over dramatizing it yeah. yeah they're being more genuine i mean there are moments when something does happen like i i'm trying to think i think it was the whaley house when he got pushed yeah yeah that i was time. just reading on that yeah and he got pushed pretty damn hard and you could tell because they were all standing the three of them standing right there center in the yeah. room and there was no movement until he got pushed. And when he and got pushed, you could st- you could see it was like 
it was like he felt like he got slapped. You could see it on his face, like, oh, yeah. whoa. Yeah. You know, and he, I thought he handled that perfectly because he did say, what was that? You know, he did lose it a little bit, but it was more natural, you know, and, and when you when you watch the footage, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, yeah. I yeah. would definitely, you know, I can see where he's doing that. He wasn't you know. staging that. He was yeah. not staging that because there was no movement whatsoever until he got pushed back. Yeah, he's a pretty stout dude. So. Yeah. And, I, yeah, I give him kudos because, I, you know, yeah. he's been in quite a few where other people are screaming and hollering around him. And he's just like, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I give him kudos, you know, on that. <laughs> I've seen him react like twice. And that's one of them. And then there was another one where he, he was actually touched when he was at a... Um, I believe it was a, uh, oh my God, a Civil War base, and he was in a cannon room, I believe. Oh. And he and he got he got touched. That's the only times I've ever actually seen him be more emotional than yeah than normal than, than normal yeah. Well, you know, like I said, like you know, I when it comes to psychic medium, if if they're pretty level headed, then it's more it's way more believable than the you know the ones that are you know over dramatizing laying over the top of couches you know going oh it's killing me you know i've just always been that way you know so it's it, you know it it's hard for me you know everybody always talks about you know well you should bring a psychic medium here what you? you should get a psychic medium with you and i'm like if i ever run across someone that isn't going to play complete drama queen then maybe yeah i like uh, cindy kaz and uh um Michelle Bellinger, she's pretty good. Yeah, no, none um, of those really. Yeah, those are all kind of. They're pretty level headed about this yeah. stuff. And I think, I would think if you were psychic, you would. I would think if I was psychic, I guess would be the way to put it. I would want to be more level headed because you're way more open to things than the average person. Because you know, most most people. Um, I would say that, that you know, they, they're kind of closed off to certain things, mm -hmm. you know, especially, you know, when you're playing brain dead and, yeah. you know, you're staring at your phone all the time. They're pretty closed off to that kind of thing. But when you're like psychic, you would be more open to stuff like that. So I would think that you would be more practiced or you try to practice more yeah. to hold yourself together because, oh, you know, you think if you got emotional in that state, it would draw it to you more. It would, you know, and then you'd completely lose it. So I would think that, you know, True, I would think true psychics in that aspect would, you know, be more controlled. Right, right. I, I imagine that's got to be a constant battle with Ooh. with a person like that. Yeah, you the know? sensitivity. Yeah. yeah, constantly having someone in your face. You know. Yeah, exactly. She was. I, I saw her do uh, like Cindy Cash. She was doing a uh, a chalk art or like coal. Yeah. And she was pulling someone from like all the way across the world. Yeah. And they were like, <laughs> "Hey, we I just wanted to see you." You know, yeah. and she's like, yeah, there's no, there's no time or no limits there. They can come and see you if, if they yeah, want. Yeah, so I would think that if you truly have this ability, you would try. Because, you know, the, there's oh, got to yeah. be times when you're just like, please, just go away. I want a moment to myself, you know. You think if, they, if you're a true psychic that there would be a time when you would say, okay, I got to close this off, at, for it, you know, at certain times and just kind of chill for a few. Yeah. So yeah, I no. would think that, you know, they should be more. You would think so. Yeah. You would think so. I mean. <laughs> but, you know, drama sells, so. Yeah, of course. <laughs> or Discovery. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. any more questions? I'm good. I'm good. I think we covered a lot. Yes. Uh, especially the, the being quiet part is really important. <laughs> That's our that favorite. That is our favorite, favorite uh, we're we're saying that in it? a PC <laughs> level too, so yeah. <laughs> we're a little bit more vulgar about that. <laughs> a little more, some of us, yes. 